it feels good to be back. Now, do you notice something new? Maybe my haircut's a little bit different or no? No, well, if not, I guess we'll just continue on with the video. In today's tutorial, we are gonna be doing some super simple text animations that you might've seen on some social media posts or even on some of my long form posts. It's a pretty simple but pretty trendy animation that will make your videos look, well, a lot cooler. But before we get into it, I just wanna say a quick thank you to Artlist for sponsoring this video, but more on them later on. So in After Effects, I have no composition set up yet because there is something that we need to do before we actually go in, and that is just to think a little bit. Now, what we're gonna be doing is creating an animation that can easily be converted to an animation preset, but that also means that we need to keep in mind the type of composition. Now, when we go and turn this into an animation preset, it will depend on how you set up your composition in the first place. So I recommend if you do wanna save this to do two different compositions, one vertical and one horizontal, and then you can just apply it to whatever you kind of want. For this example, I have a clip that we're gonna be working with just to make it a little bit easier, which is a clip from my previous main channel video type of thing where I did sound design. But I'm just gonna take this clip and I'm just gonna drag in so that all the settings match the clip I'm working with, especially if you are doing rotoscoping. Otherwise, you can just create 1920 by 1080, whatever, 4K, blah, blah, blah. But again, the size of your composition will affect how the animation we're doing works. This first animation is pretty simple and I like to think of this as like a base animation. It can look super cool on its own, but you can also use it like we're gonna do later to create something even cooler. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just create some new text. So I'm just gonna set my text tool up here and I'm just gonna type out whatever I want. Ideally, you'd wanna sync this to whatever words I'm speaking, but I'm not gonna bother with that just for the sake of this tutorial. So I'm just gonna say, hi, my name is Paul and subscribe. And then I'm just gonna take this text and I'm just gonna send it up using my align tool over here, which you can find by going into window and then opening the align. Highly recommend having that open. And then we're just gonna change the font to something very classic, very simple, and that is a Helvetica font. And I'm just gonna do bold because that is the sexiest. And maybe decrease the size just a little bit and then narrowing it in just a little bit more. Super, super simple. And just make sure that it's still centered. I highly recommend getting a plugin like Decompose Text, which is free because it's gonna make this a lot easier. You can also do this manually, but I wouldn't recommend it. And we're just gonna select words in here so that it splits the layer up into individual words. And then for my sake, in this instance, I don't care that they stay in the exact spots because we're gonna mess with that anyways. So I'm just gonna set approximate position without expressions because that way I get each word on its own layer with the right sizes of the text. So that's the best way to go about it. Kazo, have you forgotten how it works when I record videos? There is no a no cat policy, okay? Sorry, buddy. Now our text does look a little bit funky, but as you can see, we have each text on its own layer which is gonna make it super easy to position however we want, <laughs> which lets us play with the composition of all the text. We can change the font super easily and also the size of it. So just a lot more freedom to get the exact look that you want. Then we are gonna use FX Console, which again is a free plugin that will be linked down below. And it's just gonna make it a lot easier to find all the effects. And then we're just gonna search for transform, which is just a transform effect, nothing fancy there. And then we are gonna duplicate this because we need two instances of this to get the look that we want. And then the first one, I'm just gonna name this slide in so we know what it is. And the second one, we are just gonna name slide out. So super simple. And then the animation is, I know, mind-blowingly easy, but the easing is what really makes it. So we're gonna keyframe it at, let's go to about 12 frames here. And to make this a little bit easier, let me just remove the time code here, just start that at zero to make it a little bit easier. So 12 frames here, I wanna keyframe the position here. And then I wanna go back to the very beginning and I just wanna drag this down just a little bit. I typically go right below the line where the text kind of starts. Feel like that works pretty good. And that just gives us a nice little in animation. So really nothing fancy there. And let me just mute this and for all our care, we can hide that for now. The good thing about using the transform effect is that not only can we copy and paste this to a bunch of layers without having to worry about the actual position of it, we can just move this layer without affecting the keyframes. So it's just a nice way of working in order to make your life a little bit easier if you wanna change where each text is, because that is something we're gonna be doing a lot with this effect. We can hit U and we can see our keyframes here, and then we just wanna go forward a little bit, and it's not gonna matter much where you place these because you're gonna be wanting to change this depending on the length of each layer, but just as a good frame, just move forward a little bit, and then we are gonna keyframe the second transform effect, which is to slide out. And then again, go 12 frames forward, just keep it nice and simple, and then slide it up right above the word. And that's it. So now if we hit U twice, we can see all our keyframes. And then for the first set here, we are gonna go into the flow panel, paid plugin, 
which I have a bunch of different presets like this easing preset. Super nice, you can get this on my Patreon as well as the project file and all the other project files at patreon.com forward slash my pom. So recommend that if you are interested. But then we are gonna apply the super sexy in and then we're gonna select the other last two keyframes and apply the reverse, which is the super sexy out, which essentially just means that it's gonna be coming in with a lot of pace and leaving, slowly picking up the pace and then leaving with some nice momentum. So playing that back, we get something that looks like that. Super, super simple. And then the trick is to right where it ends, go one frame back and you can select your layer and an option and close bracket or just drag your layer to end right there. So that now we have an animation that looks a little bit like this. Now I have found that turning on motion blur for this typically works very well. If I was just doing a pure animation, I probably wouldn't do it, but combining it with footage, which usually has motion blur in it, it fits the, the, the theme that we're kind of going for. So enable that and we have something that looks like this. Super smooth, super simple. In my opinion, probably better than a lot of text animations that you can do on a, on a pretty quick whim hit. The fun thing about this is we can turn this into an animation preset. If we select the two effects right here in our effect panel, we can go up to animation and save animation preset. You just wanna save it wherever you want. Sometimes it won't let you save in the actual folder where you want your text animations. So you just have to save that on the, te on the desktop and then drag it into the folder for After Effects where you have the effect presets. And that is pretty much it. So now essentially, let's say you have this saved, you can go into another layer and then you can just type in, you can set it up so you have it right here. So you can do slide in, slide out, whatever. So I have a slide in and slide out preset made right here. But if you don't wanna do that, you can just take this and you can just copy and paste these two effects to all the other layers and paste that. And now all of them have an animation to them and trim all my layers right there and let's just scatter them out just a little bit like such and boom 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 and then they all kind of leave if i turn this clip back on we can now position them however we want i'm just going to delete that because we don't need it this is where the layout part comes into it we just want to mess around with this a little bit move the text out a little bit get some nice fun layouts here we can be pretty creative with this and again you do have the freedom to go ahead and change the size of different things and whatnot to keep it nice and fun and maybe let's do this one. Just do like a nice different font, maybe, you know? It's not gonna hurt nobody. And then we're just gonna change this a little bit. Increase the size of this a little bit. That looks pretty good. And now playing that back, we have an animation that looks a little bit like this. Now, before we hop onto the second part of this, which is just taking this and spicing it up a little bit more, I wanna talk about one thing that I think you should really focus on in all your upcoming projects this year, and that is sound design which is where today's video sponsor, Artlist, comes into play. Not only is Artlist a great place to find music, especially now that they have stems, but they also have a crazy library of stock footage, LUTs, they even have an AI voiceover feature, and also the sound effects. All of the animations that I'm showcasing in this video feel 10 times more premium because of the sound design. It is legitimately a cheat code to elevating your pieces to feel way more premium. And the crazy thing is you don't even need to be a pro to get insanely good results. The AI powered search engine makes it super easy to find exactly what you need for your projects, which is not only a massive time saver, but also makes it a lot easier when you don't know the exact terms of what you are looking for. Speaking of saving time, I actually have an art board on Artlist, which is essentially like a collection or a folder, which includes some of my favorite sounds that I use over and over in my projects. You can find it in the link below. Oh, and I also have a full video on my philosophy behind sound design, as well as me covering the entire process, which again is done with the help of Artlist, which I very much love and use all the time. Again, that video can be found down below if you are interested in learning a bit more about sound design. Now, a final note before we actually continue on with the second part of this animation is the licensing. Altless has both licenses for if you are creating stuff for yourself or if you are creating stuff for other people. They also have different plans. So if you only need sound effects or music, you can get that. Or if you just need the AI voiceover feature, you can also get that separately. I would highly recommend checking out all this stuff and seeing what kind of fits you. And you can do that using the link below where you can get two months free when you sign up for the annual subscription, which I highly recommend. I could not recommend anything more than Artlist. It will change your creative game complete. Now the second part of this animation is really pretty simple. All we are gonna do is just spice it up a little bit. First of all, turning on motion blur for all our text layers. Then I'm gonna right click down here in my little window, go to new and create a camera. Yes, we are gonna be working in 3D space, ladies and gentlemen, but it is not scary. I promise you, super simple. 
I am just gonna open up a camera. You can put 50 millimeters. You can really do whatever you want. It's not gonna matter too much here, but we are gonna create that and the f-stop we'll just leave for now because we can always go in and change that later. But we're gonna hit okay. And just wanna make sure you are working in classic 3D, which is gonna give us that nice bokeh that we are after. From there, you wanna take all your layers and you wanna put them in 3D space. Then with this camera selected, you wanna to go to the very beginning and you can open two view mode already, or you can wait until we actually need it, but I like opening it up just so I can see kind of what we're working with here. So as you can see, we have all our layers on this plane right now. The first thing we're gonna do is with the camera, I'm gonna hit P to open up the position and I'm gonna keyframe the position and I'm just gonna move it to the end here so that it's at the end, it's all the way zoomed out. And then at the beginning, I'm gonna zoom in a good bit, something like this, not too zoomed in. We still get nice, you know, my head isn't cut off or anything, but it will give us a little bit of a punch in. So super simple animation. I'm not even gonna ease any of this. I'm just leaving it right now. Now you can see already we get a little bit of movement, but we have some weird flickering because everything is on one layer. Now, the only thing I'm not gonna touch is the main layer, which is our you know, actual video clip or whatever. But all of these ones, I'm gonna take them and then I'm just gonna drag them out a little bit so they are all in front. Now, the reason why I keyframe the camera first is because I don't wanna place a word, let's say hi, which shows up pretty early. I don't wanna place it too far in front because as you can see, then we're not gonna see it in frame when I'm actually saying that word. This way, I just have a little bit of a guideline as to where I should position everything which makes it a lot easier so you don't do one thing and then have to redo it, which I've definitely done a couple of times. So take this as a lesson from my trial and error. But we are gonna place this however we want. We'll just move this down and we wanna make sure that all of these words are on different planes to get the best effect. So I'm just gonna take a couple words here, move it forward a little bit, and then just kind of scatter them around, put some closer to the background, put some further away in the front and move this up a little bit. And this one will move forward a little bit and put the subscribe very far up there like such and then i'm going to go back to the beginning and we've got high and then these two letters overlap so i'm just going to move this out to the right a little bit and maybe take high and let's move this forward a little bit more and then we can move it in just a little bit and the great thing about this is that not only do you get some pretty interesting layouts some interesting animation with the parallax but once we crank up the depth of field, we're gonna get some really fun looks with how different words are blurred and others aren't. We can really play around with that a lot to get an interesting look. For now, we're just gonna worry about the composition here and maybe move this in just a little bit and move it up. And maybe we can move it forward a little bit more to make it look a little bit bigger and put it right there and move forward a little bit more. So this is way out of frame. So I'm just gonna move this in a little bit more poor cars out and this one as well is way out of frame so we're just going to move this in and maybe move it back a little bit here bam and we just want something that looks interesting that's really all we're going for here it's kind of like playing tetris but without very defined rules of how that tetris should look and again the subscribe we can put that in the front here kind of in the middle here move forward a little bit more. I think this looks pretty good for the layout stuff. So if we play this back and just have a look at what our animation actually looks like. So we get a nice little bit of parallax. The layout looks pretty cool. You can see the different la layers of text kind of look like they move at different speeds because, well, some are close to the camera, some are further away. It's just a nice look. I don't really know how to explain it. It just looks sexy. With that being said, we can now go into the camera and we're just gonna open up this little drop down, go into camera options, and then I'm gonna change the iris shape to something like a hexagon, which is just gonna mean that the blur is gonna look nicer. And then we can play around with the aperture. Let's set that to maybe 300, which is really cranking it up. And already you can start seeing some of that depth of field here. The most important thing is my focus distance, is this little line you can see over here that moves this pink line. I wanna make sure that this is always on the background so I just wanna make sure I line this up at the very beginning. And this is, I guess, a benefit of having linear keyframes is it's gonna be super easy. It's one keyframe here. You wanna go forward to the end and then you just wanna line it up again. And then because it's a linear animation, they're always gonna be lined up perfectly, which is just super nice. But we wanna make sure that our background is in focus, unless you, of course, wanna take the creative liberty to put some of the text 
in focus and the background out of focus. You can also do that. Also a very nice look, but that is a different story. So now here, if we play this back, you can see it kind of looks different. Boom, boom, boom. Some of the text is blurry. Some of the text isn't. And this is where you can go in and really fine tune the look. So let's say the subscribe, we want to be a little bit more out of focus. So you can put it out in the foreground a little bit more, move it up maybe a little bit and maybe decrease the size of it just a little bit to counteract some of the being closer to the camera or maybe the Mapol here, we can move that forward a lot more, but also decrease the size of it like with the before so that it's not like super, super intense up here and takes too much of attention. Although it is a very nice name if I do say so myself, but that is pretty much the look that we are trying to go for. You can play around with the depth of field in terms of the aperture or the blur level, which just the aperture is like the f-stop and then the blur level was kind of just like an artificial increase of it. So it just makes it more. So it's not that the depth of field changes, it's still gonna be, let's say an f1.2 or an f11. It's just gonna be more intense at that. And now if I just hide this and let's just end this composition right here and let's watch this back because that is pretty much all there is for this tutorial. Super simple, two text animations. Big thank you to Altless for sponsoring this video. Highly recommend checking them out if you do need sound effects, music, LUTs, stock footage, pretty much anything, they've got you covered. Link in the description to get two months for free. Fantastic deal. And patreon.com forward slash Mapol if you want to get a hold of this project file or any of the other project files that I've done for all of these tutorials, as well as some really nice presets like the flow. And with that being said, I just want to say thank you for not only watching this video, but also for this bad boy and uh, it's super pretty and I love it and I'm so grateful for this. And uh, with that being said, I'll see you again very soon for another tutorial. Peace out.